What's up, guys? Steph with an F here from Blank TV. I'm here with Gemini Syndrome at Loaded Hollywood. What's up, guys? How's it going? It's all right. Great. So, Gemini, just a, a background, um, Gemini Syndrome signed to Warner in 2011. They released an album in 2013, and now they're about to go on tour with Seven Dust. How long is the tour with Seven Dust? Uh, it goes about a month, yeah. We're, we, there's it's a bunch of uh, shows with them, and then little headline shows in between, it all mixed and matched together. What are you guys looking forward to most with tour with Seven Dust? Hearing good music every night. like. Man, the, I've been a, a fan of Seven Dust for so long. Like to go out on tour with them is it's pretty all right. Who was your guys' first tour with? Uh, our first tour. I mean, honestly, our first ourselves. tour was ourselves. We headlined our first tour <laughs> before we got signed. We uh, said we're not going to get stuck in LA just playing local, and we got an agent, and he booked us our first like six weeks of tour. And uh, we just went out there and slugged it out ourselves. Awesome. That's, that's pretty commendable. Um, what vehicle did you guys first tour in? Pegasus. It was, it was, a, <laughs> a, uh, it was a white a, panel van. A Chevy, a Chevy van. But with it, wasn't, a, it was a cargo van, though. It wasn't even a passenger van. Two seats. One bench and uh, nothing. Chairs. Nothing. Well, bean, bean bags at first. Yeah. That happened. So we only had technically two rows of seats, and everything else was filling it in. Very dangerous. Don't try it at home. <laughs> probably, probably illegal in some states. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the longest you guys have gone without a shower on tour? Ten days. Fourteen. So you got ten or fourteen. Days? Fourteen. I think so. Well, I know this for sure. Um, well, it was in the winter time. I think it was too. It was with with Mushroom Head. We played 13 shows in a row. Uh, we were in the van. The heat wasn't working. Uh, I didn't take my pants off, or my shoes, or my shirt for two weeks. It was bad. But then the thing is, like, you get to a certain point when it is just what it is, and you go, you say to yourself, "I know that I'm dirty, but I'm just I am what I am." And the clean version of me would probably be gagging right now, but I don't know because I just grew into it. And then when you do take a shower, all of a sudden it's confusing. True. Um, this one is for Aaron. Do you have any pre-show rituals or warm-ups that you like to do? Yes. Anything, anything like special or weird or... Um. I have like a, a routine that I go through that's kind of mine. I'm not going to tell you what the details are. Uh, I li- there are certain songs I like to listen to to get me kind of in the, in the zone to play. Uh, and then before we actually play, I usually throw up. Are you serious? Yeah. You like to throw up before you go on stage? Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> like to. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it's not like, oh boy, I'm so stoked I'm going to puke right now. It, it no, it just happens. I have a three-hour cutoff for food. If he eats within three hours of playing, I get to eat. Tw- I get to eat if, twice. If he doesn't, if he doesn't, like, if he eats, if he eats at four in the afternoon and we don't play till ten at night, we're good. But if we're playing at eight and he ate at six thirty. More than likely, an hour later, it's going to come back. You're going to have a bad time. Yeah. That's the reality, That's folks. The reality. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> we're not even, we're not even we're not kidding. kidding. That's, like, is, so real. I don't want someone to distort this story and think that you're supposed to do that because all the acid no. is bad and it makes no. it harder to sing. It's not good. But it just happens. Yeah. So if you're gonna have a like a like a baconator from Wendy's, I would recommend eating it at like two in the afternoon if you're playing at nine, <laughs> as opposed to having it at seven. Because you're gonna have a bad. You're time. gonna have a lot of bacon, twice. Lesson learned for bands out there. Um, what is your guys's like guilty pleasure song? Like, are you a huge? 
fan of Justin Bieber's Baby or like a Britney Spears song that you can't love, get enough of? I love Justin Timberlake all day, every day. JT till I die. For me, I don't. To me, it's not guilty because it's Katie good. Perry. No, no, no. I I just started listening to Katy Perry. That uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, anything that's pop technically oh, well, uh, as as a hard rock about, guy, uh, it's supposed. I, I look bad, but whatever. Anita, all, Anita Baker. No, I listen to Anita Baker all the time. Sweet love. I don't think. I, I don't think most people that's even awesome. in the newer generations even know who Anita Baker is. But if you don't know who Anita Baker is, you should go check it out. Go, Sweet love. Go buy an Anita Baker. If you don't have any soul, you will after listening to Anita Baker. You will. Have you guys ever had any stalkers or fans that just go way too far? Yeah, Rich. He, he, he actually went so far as to get a bunk in the same vehicle that I have. And uh, he sleeps next to me every night. It's really creepy. I don't know what he's talking about. Who's this dude? Anyway, uh, I don't think there's literally been anyone that's complete stalker status. Um, there's been a couple weird clingers and a couple people we've had to kind of eh, from us, but never the typical definition of like, holy crap, I have a stalker. I haven't, I haven't, I'm not lucky enough to have gotten that myself. I'm, I'm not cool enough. Lucky enough. I'm not cool enough because nothing says I love you like a stalker. So no restraining orders at all? Yet? Not yet. I mean, I've blocked a few people on Facebook. Oh, I'm going to delete you from my MySpace friends. <laughs> what is your most embarrassing moment on stage that's ever happened at a show? Uh, I just threw up at the last show on stage. Yeah, we were, bet- we were between songs, and I was like, we're about to start playing. And then I looked over, I was like, he's not talking. Let me see what's happening. Oh, there he goes. We had drove uh, three days from L.A. to Virginia in an RV without air conditioning on the 40. So that goes through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, the desert. It was really, really hot. Let's just say that. So three days, I, I lived in that. And then I started screaming on, Bleh! and okay, I'm gonna throw up now. So, I, but he I've, did it on the side. He didn't do it in yeah. the middle of the song. You know, he yeah. he 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 maintained. Yeah, he did it. So, what about your pre-show ritual? You did you not do it that day, or did you skip it, or? Oh, no, we already... no, I I did it that day too. Yeah. Well, we were out of ritual though because we hadn't played a show in a week. See, this was weird for us because we did two months of tour, had one week off, and then did one festival. So there was no ritual. Because <laughs> it, it, it was so, it was weird stuck, stuck zone because like if we hadn't played in a while, then it's like a one-off. If we were on tour, that's part of the ritual, but we were in this weird limbo. We didn't know how to... Like you're, you're almost home, but you're not. But you're almost on tour. So go play a show. But you're almost on tour. Ah, but Still. you're not. Yeah, so it throws off all your your uh, your your feng shui, your life feng shui. I threw up a lot. So you guys have been around for a while, um, and the music industry is quite different than it was, say, like 20 years ago, or whatnot. Um, growing up, so what's your guys' opinion on music or er, fans downloading music for free? I mean, I'm I'm guilty for sure at some points of stealing music from people, but uh, man, in reality, that's how we make money. That's how we make a living. We're artists, you know. Like, I would hope that people buy the record, buy the song, you know. Like, we're doing a trade just like anybody else. We're going to a factory or. You know what I mean? Or going to the car lot and selling Chevys. We're doing work. And this is what we do. So hopefully somebody cares enough to, to spend the, the fucking $7 on it, you know? Is he allowed to say F-bomb? Are you allowed to F-bomb? Is he allowed to F-bomb? Because I just did. He just F-bombed. Okay, he's making sure. I don't know. I don't know. This should be a... I, I just fucking f bomb. We're, we're used to going to all the corporate radio stations where we have to be told before we, I try. we talk. To, I try. To I not. really do. Um, for me, it's uh, there's like the literal issue of download it, buy it, 
but to me, it's really about looking at the principle of it, which is just support. Uh, does it? Is it annoying that someone downloads it for free versus paying ten dollars for it when we're broke and need the support to keep playing shows? That that's annoying. But, our record. but but in the bigger part of the issue is because everything's evolved the way it has is if you don't buy the record and you download it for free eh, it's annoying but you can not buy be, a shirt. but you can not be annoying by coming to a show sure, buy a shirt. Bu- buying a shirt just doing other stuff to support because that's what it is in the long run is support you know buying the album is supporting the, the artist if you're not going to buy the album then do something else that supports the artist even if you go all over the internet and tell everyone in the world about your favorite band, that amount of like promotion and, and caring helps more than maybe just that ten dollars for the album, you know. So it's it's not as literal as buy it, don't buy it, you know. It's like just support your bands in some way, shape, or form. Have you guys ever had a fan like a touching story from a fan that really like inspired you or like moved you? Yep. This dude likes to cry. Yep. <laughs> Do you want to tell us about it? Yep. <laughs> so we played uh, Salinas. You're talking about Kansas, Miriam? Miriam. Aftershock. Miriam, Kansas. Aftershock. I was in the uh, the green room, and Brian came in, our drummer, and he said, hey, man, I got a, a person you got to meet. Okay. Who? It was a 10-year-old girl. She's... Uh, She's a Chinese girl adopted from China. She has albinism. Like this guy. Hung out with her and her mom. I've, I've kept in touch with the family, man, the whole time. The song Basement is about growing up with albinism, right? So this little girl, man, she sat in the front row, and I held her hand while I sang that song, and I cried like cried like an insane person just like having having the ability to write a song about something I went through and then have someone there that had gone through the same thing and was it is going through the same thing such a little person like she's like so little and perfect and like not bitter yet you know she's not like mad at the world yet just happy to be there Touching moment for me, I don't get touched. I'm kidding. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I let him do all the touching. See? <laughs> Has there ever been um, a, a show that's just out of control that you that like a, that sticks out in your mind or like a venue that you just love to play every time you guys come through a certain town? Man, that's tricky. Because there's so many shows that flood to my head that I can't focus right now. Is there... What... I mean, when we used to play in L.A., go play at the Roxy was, like, the thing. You know, like, that was exciting. We get to play with our... Like, shows with our friends and other bands and see all, our, all of our friends and play. Uh, so that always stood out, especially now the fact that we haven't played in L.A. in over a year. Uh, that... Seems like a standout idea, playing in LA with our friends. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think if anybody us, like us. ever died at our shows. I don't think so. Thankfully, no. Way to take it there. <laughs> Do you guys have any plans for any LA shows? Uh, I'm hoping at the end of this uh, tour with Seven Dust. I know that we're doing a bunch of headline stuff after it, like on the way to it and on coming back. Um, and I know that uh, we're playing Vegas like August 30th or something. So logically, I would assume that we would end in LA. So just waiting to hear confirmation. But hopefully, first week of September, I would hope. Maybe. After the Seven Dust tour, what's next for you guys besides just playing shows? Like any new records coming out? Any singles? Any plans? We're going to look to uh, do another record soon. Want to. I, whatever soon means, I'm not really yeah. sure, but maybe the next six months. Yeah. If I had to follow my gut, I would say early next year. 
We'll hit the studio, start doing something new. Do you guys have any last words for any fans? Any advice for upcoming musicians? Anything you want to add at all to our viewers at Blank TV? As far as play, 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 and play some more. Um, and as far as the fans, man, just as always, thank you. We wouldn't be here without them, you know? We get so much support from from the people that believe in what we do and believe in our music, believe in our message. It's, it's quite overwhelming. And... Uh, really awesome man like really gratifying to to live this life and and be able to affect people for me uh i would say for all bands out there do the work have a have a good time doing the work as opposed to trying to have a good time and avoid the work because you're uh never gonna go anywhere how about it yeah and that was uh, good. yeah, and uh, enjoy the work. Yeah, because that's why you're doing it is to make a career out of it. So it's still work. So don't forget that part of it. You know, unless you just want to live in your mom's basement for the rest of your life. And uh, where's the meatloaf? Yeah, exactly, ma. The meatloaf. So I mean, unless you have no problem being forty and saying all I got to do is play this one more sh this one showcase and and that big manager is going to come in and and do everything for me. Love. So if you want to wait that ah! out forever if you want to wait that out forever 20 years be my guest but I, I wouldn't recommend it. And uh gemnisyndrome.com Facebook check it. Facebook all that stuff. I'm going to take this microphone home with me. You don't have this anymore. It's mine now. This is Aaron signing out from and I'm Steph with an F from Blank TV. And we're here with Aaron and Rich from Gemini Syndrome. Until next time. Blank Pigment TV.